What's up guys, it's Victor here from Cyborg for Life. And today I wanted to talk about a non-union because it's a pretty big fear among lung pain patients because when you get your leg or legs broken in order to lengthen them by the device, your hope is that your bones will heal so you can eventually walk and get back to normal life. But sometimes a complication known as a non-union will develop and thus prolong your recovery time. And so today we're gonna to talk about what non-unions are, why they happen, how they're typically treated, and what you can do to avoid them as a limb lengthening patient. So an non-union is when the ends of a bone fail to heal or mend back together at the site of a fracture or a break after the normal amount of time in which it should, okay? Now, non-unions are different than a delayed union and a malunion, okay? Delayed unions might just take a little bit longer than normal, but they do eventually heal after more time and resources are provided. And malunions are where the bones heal they heal back together, but in a de deformation or a misaligned state. So how do non-unions happen? Well, there's quite a few factors that play into it, but the two main ones being poor blood supply and the patient's bone healing capacity, which is affected by numerous other factors, which I'm gonna to touch on in a little bit, but how does inadequate blood supply increase the chances of a non-union? Well, all of our body's organic tissue needs ample blood supply to function properly, and bone is no different, okay? The blood helps oxygenate our bones and carry vital nutrients that are needed for repair and growth. And if you're lacking any of these aspects, your bone can become necrotic and essentially die. It's especially true for bone that's being lengthened because as you distract the bone ends apart, your body not only has to keep up with, you know, healing the bone matrix, okay, but it also has to keep up with vascularization of that bony callus, which places a lot of demand on your body's resources. And having poor blood flow can also lead to a deficiency in the crucial nutrients that you need for bone healing, okay? Things like calcium, vitamin D precursors, uh, and other minerals for the optimal bone matrix, okay? These are all going to increase the chances of a non-union. Poor blood flow is also one of the reasons why the tibias typically have a higher incidence of a non compared to the femurs because they have less blood flow down there. The femurs, they're surrounded by a much richer blood supply with all that red muscle tissue, okay? So how does the patient's healing capacity impact the chance that they might develop a non-union? Well, every person has a different healing potential, okay? Age and health are major factors here, but also some other metabolic and, you know, immune-related processes can affect this. Things like infections, diabetes, so on, they all increase the likelihood that a non-union could occur, which is why a thorough, you know, panel screening is done prior to surgery to make sure that you're healthy enough. And one major red flag that can lead to non-unions after lung cleaning surgery is smoking. That's right. Smoking can lead to an oxygen deficiency, which can affect your body's ability to absorb calcium that's needed for bone repair and thus your bone healing, and then you can end up with a non-union. So let's say the worst case scenario happens and you develop a non-union. What are your treatment options? Well, bone grafting is a surgical technique in which the surgeon is going to take a piece of bone from you know somewhere else in your body usually the hip the iliac crest of your hip and they're going to make bone matrix out of this and they're going to seal the area of the non-union and stabilize it with some sort of implant and then that's going to you know hopefully increase the vitality of the bone tissue so that it can thus heal properly and treat the non-union. But like any good doctor will tell you, prevention is the best cure. So how can you avoid a non-union altogether? Well, at the end of the day, your body makes this complex process super easy for you to manage by asking you to follow some basic rules. And they are no smoking, uh, drink enough fluids, get moving as much as possible, you know, like with your walking assistance, just get up and move. Don't sit in bed, don't sit in your wheelchair all day, get up and move every single day, multiple times a day, do your rehab consistently, okay? Eat a healthy diet um, that has a slight surplus in calories, no need to overdo it. Uh, take your vitamins and your supplements. So yeah, non-unions are a pretty rare yet scary complication, no doubt, but doing your part as a compliant patient, you can further reduce the chances that you even develop one in the first place, go through your lung cleaning procedure, and end up with strong and healthy bones after all is said and done, get back to walking and live a normal life. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Hey, I want to hear what you guys think. What's your biggest fear about lung cleaning surgery? Is it a non-union? Is it pulmonary embolism? Is it not having perfect proportions after it's all said and done if you're getting stature lengthening? Go ahead and comment down below. And if you found the video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. And until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out. Peace.